This is the truth about VeChain. We're about to reveal some crazy facts about VeChain that you need to know about. Welcome to The Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto. From beginner tips to expert picks, use this as fuel for your investing journey. Because when you're in the know, your money will grow. This episode of The Bean Pod is sponsored by KyberSwap. KyberSwap is a DEX and DEX aggregator, which is built to facilitate all your DeFi needs in one single platform. Fast, cheap, and safe. User experience is KyberSwap's sole focus to make everyone's life better in DeFi. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. This is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today, we're going to be revealing the truth about VeChain. What's going on with VeChain? We've had a ton of comments in our YouTube section, people asking, hey, do the truth about VeChain. We really want to know what's happening. For sure. I feel like it's it's one of those projects that was very hyped up during the last bull run, like early 2021. I saw a lot of people talking about it. Now it's kind of cooled off, but it seems like a good time to do a deep dive into the project. Absolutely. It was definitely a hot topic mm. f- during the bull run. It's like an OG project, right? Um, so this is the 33rd ranked coin on CoinMarketCap, a $2 billion fully diluted market cap. All their tokens have been invested. Mm. This began in 2015 as a private chain. Mm. That's old. Like 2015 is older than the lion's share of projects that we ever talk about. That's right. Uh, before becoming public in 2017 as an ERC-20 token, right? where they eventually launched their mainnet in 2018 with the VET ticker. Interesting. So the, the genesis of this project is basically in China. Mm. So what the creator and one of the co-founders, this Sunny Liu, uh, he was formerly CIO of Louis Vuitton in China. Um, and another guy who, uh, I think the other co-founder, Jay Zhang, another Chinese guy, he previously worked for Deloitte and PricewaterhouseCoopers in the finance uh, division. So this kind of, you, as, we, as we talk about the, the project on this episode, you'll see their connections in China and how this project is growing over there. Yeah, so it's interesting because this, is, this was a hard fork from Ethereum and it was focused more on the supply chain side of things. So with Sunny working at Louis Vuitton, you know, there's a lot of counterfeit that goes on. So it makes a lot of sense to create a blockchain that can now verify and tokenize items on the blockchain so you can figure out, you know, ensure that a customer is not getting something that's counterfeited. For sure. Supply chain management has now become a very hot topic. You know, through the probably last 12 to 16 months, the supply chain around the world has been completely messed up. You can't get goods anywhere. You go to the grocery store, shelves are empty. So now people are looking for these different supply chain solutions. And there's another project that we've kind of been talking about, which we'll mention later in the episode, which has kind of brought up the V chain topic again, because people are like, all right, we need a supply chain solution. Who's offering blockchain related things that can potentially solve these problems. So now V chain is kind of coming back into the spotlight a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I think they did. So they've kind of done a few different like turnarounds, if you will. Like they went from, you know, first of all, being ERC token and then doing the hard fork into supply chain management. And then they started to do like some DeFi dappy stuff. And now they're kind of focusing on sustainability. So Mm. a lot of like carbon emissions and tracking, you know, more for like a climate change perspective for the EU and for China. Yep. So they've almost, again, done another slight pivot mm. from supply chain management. Right. So you so never really know, right? Yeah. One of the things that, you know, when we always do these episodes, the truth about, all right, go to the website and you can already get a good kind of feel of, from the project, from the website. Man, with VeChain's website, you go on there and if you didn't know anything about the project, you would have no clue what they do. Like yeah. it's super technical, very ambiguous. Uh, what does it say? It says... um, I have it somewhere. It's like, it's just like a, a statement where it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, all right. Well, they do have, so I, I, when I went on CoinMarketCap, I was like, try, and then I went onto their website. And that, sorry, I went onto Twitter, CoinMarketCap, trying to find the, the correct website to use. They have like vchain.org. They have like vchain.com. They right. have another vchain. Like it's, so they have vchain, they have toolchain, which is for the enterprises. Yep. And then they have VeChain Sync, which is for the retailers, which is how they access the dApps. Right. But then they also have VThor, which is one of That's the tokens. Right. Yeah. And then they have VET. It's so a lot. there's a lot going on with. So this is, I found the sentence. So this is like the first thing you read when you go to the VeChain website. 
The public blockchain that derives its value from activities created by members within the ecosystem solving real world economic problems. Like what, what yeah, does that, that even a mean? Bunch, a bunch of jargon. Exactly. And like, I want to know exactly what a company does as soon as I go to the landing page. Mm. And then you, you read on on the VeChain website and it starts talking about very technical things such as meta transaction features, uh, proof of authority, which is their way of, uh, you know, the smart contracts. It's extremely technical. So for retail investors and, you know, non-enterprise people, it's nice that they're obviously going after enterprise, but I feel like a lot of people are going to be turned off of VeChain because you go to the website and you just have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, no, I was a bit confused going from all the different websites. I didn't understand what was what until actually digging into understanding that, okay, they have the enterprise side, they have the retail side, but there's not really, if you want to DAP radar mm. and, and look up the DAPs that are currently exist for the retailers, there's absolutely nothing going on. There's no development, right. hardly any users. So it's kind of pointless from that perspective. Um, but then, yeah, you do. You have the enterprise side. And I guess we could jump into maybe some of their partners. Yeah, for sure. And see, you know, is this a project that has any validity? Yeah. So, I mean, when you when you look at the partners, it's it's pretty pretty impressive. Uh, they've got some pretty big names. Uh, Walmart, Walmart China. They've worked with them for food safety traceability. Um, so, I mean, that's a, that's a big thing. And sustainability, product inspections, all that kind of stuff on the blockchain, which is probably one of the first things that comes to mind when you talk about supply chain on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. They also uh, are working with Bayer, China, BMW Group. So they do have a, a lot of names. Mm. So I guess if we're discussing like enterprise use, as a retailer, you're probably not going to hear so much about, you know, what's actually happening, especially with when you're working with really large organizations. Typically, there's an NDA that's in place. So you don't really hear much about the partnerships. Right. Um, but what I find interesting is like, I know that VeChain has kind of had these partners for a while and what they were, a lot of them, what I've discovered were the just pilot programs and testing programs mm. with Walmart China, with BMW Group, with Bayer. But it seems as though there hasn't really been any mass adoption and continued utilization. Yeah, I would agree. I, when I when I was looking at reading about all these partnerships and the pilot programs, a lot of the news is from like 2019. 2020. Well, it's 2022 now, almost 2023. I haven't seen a lot of follow-up from those partners in terms of exactly what you said. Now we're rolling it out to a thousand stores. Mm -hmm. So what's going on there? So here's what's interesting. This is primarily, you know, the founder, um, Sonny from Ch like is in China, Louis Vuitton, China. Um, you know, you also have Walmart, China. We Everything is in China right now, right? Mm. There's, an, there's bigger pr economic problems at stake at the moment, you know, with semiconductors and supply chain issues between, you know, the U.S. and China. Right now, what I think B-Chain is trying to do is they're trying to break into the Western market. I think they're going to have a really hard time because it is a Chinese company, quote unquote. So is the U.S. going to even allow a company like this, a project, to now be tracking stuff that's occurring in the U.S.? I mean, they're talking about banning TikTok. Right? So I can't... I, so this also highlights another partnership. VeChain just partnered with the UFC for a mass marketing. So they have... VeChain has a huge logo now in the UFC octagon. You know, so 900 million households will see it across 175 countries. I think this is an attempt to become more aware within the Western right um, side of the, the world but again i just think with relations between china and us i think they have a really hard time breaking in i mean it, it's nice to see that it, they're at least making an effort uh partnering with someone like the ufc to get the word out um, because you definitely don't see a lot about their marketing and new stuff like that they have had a couple of new partnerships since the bigger ones which we discussed um they've par partnered with another a chinese company a, a large coffee brand to carry out traceability and uh, supply chain management for them called yangpu and uh all, they've i think their most recent one vchain and supply at me it's a cross border fintech hub um and they've launched nfts which are used for inventory monetization and tracking mm. that was last week right so they are still creating partnerships again it is all based in china um, but it is nice to see they're still doing things. I did see one that was North American based. It was uh, it's for actually for a Canadian company, uh, True Chase True Trace Technologies. Okay, yeah. Um, so it's supply chain trackability for primarily more so for like the marijuana industry. Right. Um, so that's kind of unique. Again, it's a small company. I think it's only listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange or so. Okay. So again, like they are forming some partnerships, but are they big enough? 
to really grab the attention and be worth a $2 billion market cap. That's, yeah, the market cap is quite high for a project that at the moment is not making a ton of noise. But, I mean, let's, let's have a little discussion about kind of, that maybe it is quite a technical project, but did you read much into this proof of authority? So, you know, there's proof of work, there's proof of stake. So VeChain is proof of authority. So what that means is a fixed number of known validators have to do like a KYC process, and then they become authorized by the steering committee of the VeChain Foundation to basically run like the nodes for the smart contracts and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like mixing centralized and decentralized. So you have these large entities which have to do KYC, so they're not fully decentralized anonymous, uh, but they become the authorities in their smart contract platform. So it is kind of interesting the way they've done that. Yeah, and, well, I mean, you want the bigger corporations to kind of have some say and control because it is an enterprise-focused smart contract solution. Mm -hmm. um, however, the ones who are running the validators are, it is almost more centralized because of how many are actually available and how much VeChain you actually have to hold to have any say yeah. from a governance and staking perspective. I mean, when you think about, you know, it's, it's supply chain management. It's built for these enterprises for those exact purposes. So it does kind of make sense that they would want to have some of those enterprises come in as the authorized validators because it gives them skin in the game. Um, and when you're talking about something as important as tracking supply, you know, we're not talking about like a, a play to earn game on Solana that can yeah. go down. And it's like, well, just wait, it'll be back up in 12 hours. Yeah. When you're tracking supply for Walmart and Gucci and Louis Vuitton, like you can't have the, sub, the, the network going down. So to have it a little bit more centralized, so things maybe run a little smoother in that regard may work out to their advantage, but I totally don't, I totally agree with you on that one. Yeah. Um, so they also have. So how, do, how, do, how does it work? So there's we have VeChain and then we have VThor. Right. So the platform uses both, right? So from what I understood, VeChain, it generates VThor, mm -hmm. which acts as the store of value and the transfer. Kind of like when we're talking about Coinos. Yeah, so it creates mana. Coinos has the mana, which is used for the gas fee. I think it's similar where VeChain generates VThor and VThor is used to pay for gas costs. Right. Separating the need for VeChain to be used when you're processing transactions on their supply chain network. Yeah, and then the more... VET a user has, the higher the priority they, they have in line, Right, uh, they receive more VThor. So that's another, it's, it's an interesting way that they've engineered the blockchain and it basically makes it, you know, gasless or very low gas. It's also like the, the t like when you have two different tokens, it kind of removes the speculation side of things. So it helps the cost, like, because you have the market speculation, which can drive price, but then you have actually like the real utility, which is the VThor. Uh, but I believe VThor is inflationary. Uh, right. Over the past year, I think they've added something like 2 billion tokens to the, um, right. to the supply. And I believe that VeChain themselves have also added um, more tokens to the circulation as well. Right. So even though it's 100% in circulation, they're they still adding still tokens. still inflationary, yeah. Mm, right. You know, what? another thing that was kind of a bit of a red flag for me, which is always when I see this in any project. Uh, so, you know, doing my research on the enterprise section of the website all the links were broken. Uh, yeah, I noticed that. So like digital carbon ecosystem, supply chain, vehicle passport, which are their different use cases. I was like, oh, we're honored to learn about this. Mm. Broken, 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 yeah. broken. It's like, well, this is a top 30 project with a $2 billion market cap and the fucking website doesn't work. Even when I first mm. went on the website, like the words were not all fitting on the screen. Mm. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you can get it. It's like, come on. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> there's, there's certain things like it's like, you know, like a startup uh, crypto play to earn yeah. game with a $1 million market cap. Like they can have a great website. It's like, yeah. nice. You know, you have a, I understand that it's not a retail focused project. So they don't expect a lot of people coming on like small new investors reading about VThor and proof of authority. But come on, get the links fixed. Like, I know. yeah. Another red flag for me is the fact that this is, although the company was started in Singapore, most of their business is in China mm. and China had that huge crackdown on crypto trading, crypto mining back in 2021. It's just like a, an area of the world where I, I exercise a bit of caution because I don't know how they're going to react. You know, what other, what, what other, how else are they going to kibosh crypto over there? Right. It's anything operating in China is, it's gotta be a bit of a red flag Yeah, because you don't know what's going to happen over there. I mean, <laughs> Well, we'll be honest, we don't know what's going to happen in America no. or Canada or yeah. anywhere with crypto, but 
China is just that next level of whatever. And if there is any sort of tensions that rise between U.S. and China, anything tied to China could suffer. Like we've seen what's happened with Chinese stocks have been absolutely fucking hammered. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's another point of risk, I think, when you are investing in VeChain. I think another thing that is a bit of a red flag to me, not so much about the project itself, but I mean, they they have focused more on like the sustainability side of things, like I mentioned earlier in the episode. But there's just so many other projects too that are doing supply chain management. Mm -hmm. And there's two projects that jump to mind. Uh, one that we discussed more heavily in one of our 100X altcoin and, and our Twitter, et cetera, is Morpheus Network, yep. who actually has real life integrations with huge companies in america too yeah dhl you. ups fedex yeah. yeah so like that's pretty big also i think they have swift and and ripple mm. um so that's pretty big and a really small market cap so if you're looking from a risk reward perspective for somebody who's focusing specifically on supply chain management yeah and not sustainability which is what v chain seems to be working towards i'd be looking more towards a morpheus network in addition to if you go on hit hashgraph's website they have something called ACG Global for supply chain as well. So they're also targeting that market. And when you look at Hedera's ecosystem and who they're working with, right? Like it would make more sense for IBM to now use Hedera like versus Boeing versus going to VeChain, yeah. a Chinese company to try to make it work. And I'm not saying like, it's obviously America is not the be all and end all. Yep. <laughs> There's obviously other countries in the world, but it's a large portion of the. For sure. I mean, well, that's, that's, one of the reasons we chose to talk about Morpheus Network so heavily over the past month and a half. You know, when we talked about Morpheus Network, it was down in the pits. No one was talking about no. it. And since then, it's up 450%. Yeah. But we thought that the time was right, given the fact that we've just been discussing all these issues about supply chain. Uh, Morpheus Network had a massive run-up in the last bull run. Everyone had completely forgotten about it. So we're like, all right, we see Catalyst here. Um, they're do they've got all sorts of things going on with their nodes. So we started posting about it, and yeah, it absolutely ripped. Mm. So even still from a risk-reward um, point of view, I think Morpheus Network is like a 70 million market cap. Yeah, it would have to... I think I, I posted some, like a market cap comparison to, to VeChain. VeChain. Right, yeah. It would do a 90x if it reached VeChain's market cap. Yeah, so I mean, it just seems like a bit of a... For me, like, I'm holding Morpheus Network now. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure about VeChain. Yeah. So it's... You always have to look at the competition in the sector when you're doing like a truth about like, you know, if we're doing a, a sustainable layer one, we'll look at the different ones. Or if you're doing a play to earn game, blah, blah, blah. But it maybe seems like with the with the inflated market cap that VeChain has, yeah. Morpheus Network is maybe a bit of a better choice. Without a without a huge moat, you know, for example, when we covered Quant, there's not a ton of other interoperable plays out there that connects literally every blockchain out there. Yep. Right. With all their tokens in circulation, like. So I'd be like, yeah, I'm all in on Quant. Yeah, right. You know, with VeChain, it's like, well, there's other comp competitors. They're based in China. There's, you know, they're having a hard time getting traction. Their dApps are not really operating yeah. for the retailers. Like, I mean, they do have a few catalysts coming up. So they just voted to upgrade the main net uh, to Proof of Authority 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be building over the next months. Um, so that is a catalyst for potential hype. And I just saw that they've been meeting with government officials from three large Chinese districts. And, you know, a Chinese district will have, you know, 150 yeah. million people. So they are now becoming more in bed with the Chinese government, which whether you think that's good or bad, it could lead to potential mass adoption, which I think they're missing at the moment. Yeah. But if you look at it, it looks like they may be moving closer to that point. So there are a few positive catalysts in the pipeline for VeChain. Um, I'm just not sure I can get past the 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 better competitors and lower market cap from a risk war perspective. Yeah, that plus the fact that the website's a bit glitchy and yeah. you're a two billion dollar company. Yeah, so I mean, look, what's what's the truth about V Chain? It's I still I like the the supply chain management. I think one of the the most natural uses for blockchain technology can be to to control the supply chain and get rid of fraud and and make things much cleaner. But I just prefer Morpheus Network, unfortunately, for VeChain. Not gonna, I'm not going to say it's never going to rip. Yeah. It, it could, if they have get these partnerships in place, maybe they make some inroads into America. But I think for me, I would pass on VeChain just due to the market cap and some of the reasons we talked about earlier. Absolutely. With Mainnet 2.0 launching, was it next year for mm -hmm. VeChain? And you're right. There's a billion people living in China. If, if somehow they start working that into their entire country. But, I mean, aside from so the competitors we discussed, in addition to... Some of the other things we have discussed as well, I think I'd 
stay away personally because like I said, what we've said in the past, there's like 20,000 different cryptos to invest in. Yeah. I'm not gonna invest in 20,000 coins. I'm gonna try to keep it narrowed down to like 10. Yep. And this one just doesn't fit what I'm looking for. Well, hey, look, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to us to do a truth about your favorite project, let us know in the comments. Whichever one gets the most likes, we'll probably do it. And then let us know if we missed anything about VeChain. We're always trying to, you know, make ourselves better and figure out more for you guys. And then tune into the next episode. Because that one's going to be a banger. All views expressed by speakers on the BeamPod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the BeamPod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.